During the months of July, there was a lot of anticipation that there would be a turnaround in the monetary policy by uh, the end of the year. I think that by July, you could consider that it was feasible. I think that it changed the course, and it's quite difficult now to foresee that the change of course in monetary policy is going to be that rapid. And uh, in that sense, yes, in terms of numbers, I totally agree with uh, your recent uh, speaker, it increased the chance that we will have a 75 basis points in uh, September, but it's not yet a done deal. What does this mean for equity performance then over the coming months? It felt like that rally that we have seen in equities that kicked off in mid-July was really driven by these weaker growth expectations and the premise that the Fed wouldn't be able to hike as aggressively as had been priced in. Do you think that still stands? In other words, should you be chasing the rally here? Absolutely not. This is not the point of uh, this is not our point of view. We think that the rally has been very, very strong. First of all, as you mentioned, you know the fact that you had this reaction on the bond market on Friday, and we will uh, check this week what will go to what will happen with the number concerning the CPI. I think one of the key factors that supported the rally, which was a strong bond market during the months of July, has disappeared to a certain extent. And second, we still have this key issue that is looming is how much will analysts revise the earning numbers for the third quarter. Uh, for the time being, the earnings season has been good, but the forecast or the perspective are not been that strong. So we, we, we consider that the two elements that can support a further rally on the equity market are not clearly there. The bond market has rallied. The earnings is... Uh, it's not yet. The, the earnings season has been good, but the earning revision could come. So we think that it's better to not chase the rally uh, on the equity for the coming months. I, I want to ask you about the shape of the yield curve. We actually just have uh, yields flashed up right now. And a lot of people are talking about that yield curve inversion and the fact that the difference between the 10-year yield and the two-year yield is now around minus 40. Typically, the curve has never been this inverted without a recession coming on. Uh, is it your view that this time could be different or are we just sitting here waiting for that recession to actually hit? Uh, that's a very, very good question. I wouldn't say that uh, this time is different. You know, it's always silly to say that this time is different. Nevertheless, we need to understand that this cycle is very, very particular because in the sense you had the COVID, the post-COVID, you had the Ukraine crisis, you have all these elements that come together it's really difficult to have a lot of visibility in the economic cycle. So you need to judge month by month, month by month, what is the, the probability of a recession. The reaction of the market is very clear, and the market has been priced, priced in a recession since June. Do we have a recession? I don't know. I am not able to answer this question for the time being. I consider that, for example, the speech of Yellen lately has been quite good in the sense that Yes, you can speak about the recession, market fear recession, but the numbers are not telling you that there is a recession. So we need to be nimble and to check what is happening week by week and month by month. And we should have more visibility by uh, the early uh, fall in uh, the US in particular. It just feels like an impossibly difficult time to put your money into the market because of the macro headwinds, because of the volatility that we're seeing in stock markets and even you look at the results of Berkshire Hathaway, the greatest investor of all time, Warren Buffett, is saying that you know this quarter has been a really difficult quarter. We just had results out of SoftBank as well. Uh, a, a tech investor tycoon, also that fund is, is struggling momentously uh, just over the last couple of months. So what do you do? Where do you put your money in this environment, knowing that there is a possibility of recession? At the same time, you're faced with very high inflationary pressures and a Fed that is hell-bent on tightening into it. I would say that, you know, at the end of the day, one of the key decisions uh, over the last three months in, a, in markets that were very volatile was to stick with your gun. And uh, I think that's what we did. In a way, it was very difficult. As you mentioned, it's a very difficult market environment. Uh, I still think that equities have the potential uh, if we go, if we think in terms of the next 12 to 18 months. But as I said, you need to be very tactical in the way you uh, invest. You need to observe the economic number coming. I think that, you know, cash for the time being give you the flexibility. Uh, is uh, interesting to have some cash to check because, you know, uh, everything is possible in this kind of environment. We could have a recession, but you could also get a slow but satisfactory rate of growth in the coming 12 months. 
I think that on the bond side, we all know that it's very difficult to make money on the bond side. I would not chase the uh, the bond rally that we experienced over the last two months. Two months. So you need to have some hedge funds, some kind of decorrelating strategy that are in your portfolio. Keep some investment in equities because equities are the place, to my point of view, are the place that is going to that is going to protect you against inflation partially. We have solid names in our asset allocation. This is the way to uh, to move forward. I think.